Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's What I Eat In A Day YouTube review is sponsored by Ritual, and I'm going to be reviewing vegan YouTuber Miles Kasiri from Healthy Crazy Cool. Now, before we get started, I want to talk for a minute about my personal supplement routine, but I get that life does get kind of crazy, and it can become hard to make sure we're getting all of the essential nutrients that we need every day. So a lot of people do ask me what brand of prenatal vitamins I use, and I recently discovered Ritual Vitamins, which is a vitamin subscription service that delivers supplements to your door, and it's only about a dollar a day. This is so nice for those of us who are practicing social distancing, or if we just want a convenient option that we don't have to remember to always go out and refill. I know the supplement world is overwhelming, but I like Ritual's prenatal because it has 12 essential nutrients to support the health of me and baby before and during pregnancy, including methylated fourth generation folate, vegan B12, D3, and omega-3, and they have no colorants, additives, or unlisted ingredients. It's also vegan, sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, and allergen-free. So if you're having a hard time finding a vitamin that fits your dietary needs, this really does have it all. Also, if you find that taking a prenatal can make you a little bit nauseous, these ones have a no nausea capsule design, so you don't have to take them necessarily with food. You can check out the link in the description to get 10% off your first three months on Ritual. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so Miles is a vegan YouTuber with almost 200,000 YouTube subscribers who describes himself as the tahini king. I mean, just watch a few of his videos and you'll get what I'm saying about that. Actually, it was Miles who inspired me to switch up how I do these What I Eat a Day videos to make them a little bit more inclusive and extensive. I assume he still wouldn't approve, especially because I'm now doing one on him, but I do think this format ensures we make it more about the diet and what we can learn from it rather than the person itself, which, as you know, was never my goal to begin with. So if you're liking this format, definitely don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content. Now, before we get into today's video too much, a gentle reminder that this video is for education and entertainment purposes only, and is not meant in any way to diagnose or prescribe any way of eating, so you should always speak to a registered dietitian or doctor about your specific needs. Okay, so you heard about my supplements. Let's kick things off by looking at his. Yeah, I take the Omega-3 just as kind of a, a good balance, and, and the B12 because I'm vegan, and like I've said before, if you're a vegan that doesn't take B12, you're not just a vegan, you're a dickhead. Oh my God, so I kind of love this guy already, but yes, I'm happy to hear that he's promoting taking your vitamin D3 and B12 and omega-3, really what I think would be the most important vitamins for any plant-based person, but also for most omnivores as well. So let's see what we're having for breakfast on day one. Alrighty, so here's my bre I was gonna say brunch, lunch, don't even know what to call it. I'm gonna give it a little sprinkle of hemp seeds for extra crunch, some omega-3s, extra protein. You guys know I put hemp seeds on absolutely everything, whether it's sweet or savory. Apart from Sharon fruit, because they don't need it. So yeah, this half is the potato salad. I also forgot to tell you, obviously I put in salt and pepper. I'm not about to make any kind of meal without salt and pepper. Um, I don't understand these salt-free people. It's just fucking crazy. I saved back some of the steamed greens just to have extra greenage, extra greens on the side. Now this is a very creamy potato salad because obviously you've got the nutty, earthy, beautiful tahini, liquid gold, but it's also very tangy and pungent from the dill and the lemon and all of the other flavors and you get the crunch from the celery. It's just, oh, perfect. Okay, so that looks super delish. Um, I think we're kindred spirits in that we both put hemp hearts on everything. Um, but I mean, if we really want to talk balance, we could add a little more protein in this, maybe throw in some silken tofu in the dressing or serve it with a side of seared tofu, but at least we're getting a little from the hemp and the tahini. I also have to say, I love how Miles describes food. Between his ode to Sharon fruit earlier on in the video, and then just the way he's talking and walking us through this meal, he really gets the sensuality of food and even something as humble as a potato salad sounds so incredible when he describes it. Let's take a look at day two. Whenever I do have like regular coffee, which is like not regularly, I actually don't feel like it gives me energy. I feel like it makes me anxious for 20 minutes and then I just feel tired. 
So again, I don't drink coffee for energy. I eat good food for energy. Yes. Oh my gosh. I see so many YouTubers who buzz through the day just sipping their green tea lattes and energy drinks. And it's really refreshing to hear someone say, hey, I drink coffee because I like the flavor and I eat food with calories, AKA energy for energy. All right, let's see what he's gonna eat. Got some frozen bloobs. Love myself some frozen bloobs, especially on hot food, like the contrast between the hot, squishy potatoes. Then you get like the icy crunch and a little bit of tartness from the frozen berries. Love it. Now it is my duty as the one and only Nut Butter King to smother this with some good runny <laughs> and kind of clumpy today. Almond butter, almond butter. You can of course use any nut butter that you have lying around. You can use peanut butter, you can use cashew butter, you can also use tahini or sunflower seed butter if you don't do nuts or if you're allergic to nuts. This is one of the things, in fact the main thing that I find makes my meals a lot more filling and satiating and just keeps me full up and satisfied is adding a good amount of fat and protein to my meals. And obviously almond butter is a great source of fat and protein, very high in protein for a nut. And to be honest, it's just fucking delicious. So this is Koyo coconut yogurt, which is very thick and creamy. I love it, it's the best coconut yogurt. And yeah, what I did to make this yogurt, yogurt, higher in protein, I added half a scoop of the Madagascan vanilla Vivo Life protein powder. And not only does that make the meal a lot more satisfying, because again, we bumped up the protein, but it bumps up the flavor as well, because that vanilla flavor. Also going to add a sprinkle of hemp seeds. You guys know I put hemp seeds on absolutely everything. Spent the last 15 minutes trying to make this look Instagrammable, um, but clearly I failed. Cheers. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. And I love that he talks about the importance of adding a good amount of fat and protein to meals to boost up satiety. I love this guy. I mean, he may kind of hate me, but I think he's a lot like me, but in a cute British man form. Let's take a look at day three. So yeah, I don't normally have avo toast for breakfast. I'm getting back onto like savory breakfast. Like I think I said in my last what I ate in a day that like when I was in Bali, I guys, I ate more fruit than freely. Like you have no idea. And I love to start with fruit, right? But the thing is, it just it just opens up a black hole. And I don't know, it's just a thing. But I'm really getting back onto savory breakfasts and just really loving avocado toast. That looks so good that it hurts my soul not to be eating it right now. I am also obsessed with sourdough anything, and that's a nice generous portion of some delicious looking sourdough avocado toast. Now, also I'm happy to hear that he's switching up his breakfast and not just having fruit. I'm not really sure exactly what he means by a black hole situation. Maybe that the fruit kind of goes right through him and it gives him the runs or that it leaves him like super hungry soon after. Either way, I am happy to see a more substantial breakfast with some more slow burning carbs and healthy fats in here with the avocado and of course that beautiful sourdough bread. I mean, if he wanted, he could use my technique of mashing some white beans into his avocado to boost up the protein. But I get not everyone is crazy about having a lot of protein in the morning. And this is a huge step up, in my opinion, from just having fruit. Okay, now let's talk about my overall thoughts on breakfast. All of these are crazy delicious looking breakfast. He definitely is a carb lover in the morning. So with the exception of day two, we could definitely boost up the protein a little bit for better satiety, which I know is really important for miles. But hey, this is why we look at the entire day. And if he's gonna pick it up on the protein later on in the day, I am 100% cool with a high carb morning. I mean, that is when most of us actually need a little energy kick. And I really appreciate that Miles relies on food, not just caffeine, to get that fix. Let's take a look at meal two. The base of this is two large heads of romaine. Yes, this is a giant bowl. You all know I love my romaine, that refreshing crunch. And then we've got the crispy tofu, soft avocado, the spicy kimchi, lots of crunchy pine nuts. Yeah, so I mean, it's a very simple salad, yet full of goodness, proteins, healthy fats. Kimchi is so good for your gut, lots of greens, but the best part, let's douse it in some of the dressing. And honestly, this dressing has come out absolutely perfect. It's actually the first time that I tried it, um, but it's bomb. So I'll leave the full exact measurements that I use down below. This 
also looks incredible. I love that we have some protein in the tofu, healthy fats in the avocado, nuts, and of course, tahini, and the added probiotic benefits of kimchi in there. Not a lot of carbs going on, and that is totally actually cool considering he had a super higher carb meal at breakfast or brunch or whatever he wants to call it that day. So this is why you kind of have to look at the entire day as a whole. Taken together, we are definitely covering all of our bases with this awesome looking meal. Let's take a look at day two. And a whole large cucumber. I'm gonna toss the potatoes and the tofu with this little refreshing mix, and then we've got the green sauce for the top. And you all know, you should all know, the camera's wonky but I don't care, um, that when I eat lunch, another one of my big tips for people that are just always hungry is to eat a lot of fibre, a lot of fibrous veggies, a lot of greens. I would usually always with my lunch and my dinner sometimes eat like a lot of romaine lettuce, spinach, kale, maybe some steamed broccoli or green beans, lots of fibrous greens to kind of bulk up the meal. Okay, so like his other lunch, this looks amazing. I would kill for this right now, and I love the combination of kind of hot and cold and creamy and refreshing. We've got lots of fiber in the veggies and the fruit. We got fat in the dressing and the avocado and protein from the tofu. And I agree. Everything is more delicious in some kind of taco vessel. So that looks super bomb. Let's take a look at day three. All right, here is the final result. This tofu is just so perfectly crispy. And then these broccoli, broccolini, whatever it is, these florets are so nice and caramelized. And that's because of the coconut aminos. I often roast in balsamic vinegar or balsamic glaze as well if I want things to get like really sweet and caramelized, but coconut aminos, does the job even better. Then I've just got some purple cabbage, as per usual, and underneath, remember that huge bowl of kale I showed you, which was in one of my hu like huge, huge bowls. Uh, it all wilted down, kind of cooked down, beca became nice and tender, just through the process of massaging it with the avocado, the coconut aminos, and the lime juice. All it needs, of course, is a good drizzle of liquid gold. Another killer lunch, I mean, We've got loads of beautiful, colorful vegetables. We've got our protein and the tofu, healthy fats from the avocado, olive oil and tahini, lots of great things going on and it looks insanely good. Also, I just picked up a new tip. I never thought to roast with coconut aminos. Um, so yeah, thanks Miles. I'm totally gonna be checking that out. Let me give you my thoughts on his lunches. So Miles, honey, can you invite me to lunch sometime because I want what you are having. Now, I am so happy to see a little bit more protein action happening with a second meal. It is becoming clear to me that Miles may not know that he's doing this, but he's actually really well balancing out his day nicely with carbs and protein. I mean, it is a bit repetitive as he tends to rely mainly on tahini for fat, tofu for protein, and potatoes for carbs, but I get that sometimes you just like what you like. I am happy to see him switching up his preparation of the ingredients and serving them all into interesting and delicious looking meals. Let's take a look at his snacks. I'm impressed. It does smell like orange Nutella. Man, I love chocolate orange. I miss Terry's chocolate orange so much. Cheers. Like this is the kind of thing, like even if you cracked it open on date night, like you just would not share. <laughs> I am dying. I love that he has an erect penis over this chocolate orange peanut butter, even though I admittedly do not like the combination of orange and chocolate. And I think Terry's chocolate orange is just gross. But I get that it's totally a love or hate it thing. And if you have a strong opinion on this, like me or like Miles, please leave me a comment below about where you stand. Are you team chocolate orange or not? I totally want to know. Let's take a look at day two. Some good old sell. Do you know what, guys? I reckon this is actually going to be bomb. I, I, I have a feeling. Cheers. But also on top of that... So I love that Miles reviews different nourishing, satiating snacks. And macadamia nuts are rich in healthy fats, manganese, and fiber, as well as tons of flavonoid antioxidants. Plus, they taste legit amazing and are for sure one of my favorites. So I am confident without even trying it, that that macadamia nut butter would be so good. 
Let's take a look at day three. I, I'm so excited to see all these different nut butter spreads. I mean, chai spice peanut butter, it does sound kind of weird, but with this brand, you just never want to write them off. Um, also, I don't have any celery today, which is kind of criminal. So instead, we are going in with a cajot. Cheers. Jeez, the flavors in this. All I can say about this. Oh my gosh, it's like Christmas, but spreadable. I feel like I need this now. I am obsessed with chai. So, hey, Nordy, if you want to ship up to Canada, please hit me up. Also says that he has an apple after that, which I think would be really tasty with the chai peanut butter. So that would be a nice duo if he wanted to combine the two. Let me tell you my overall thoughts on his snacks. Okay, so you guys know my thoughts on a healthy snack. I always try to look for one or more of what I call the hunger crushing combination. So that's fiber, protein, and healthy fats. Well, even though all of these snacks are basically the same, they are nut butter, I have to say they all fit that criteria perfectly. Nuts in general are a perfect packaged snack because they have plant-based protein, fiber for regularity and heart health, and those awesome monounsaturated fats. Also, I need to try this brand because these nut butters would be so delicious and so fun in oatmeal, yogurt, or pancakes. I could think of so many great recipes to make with them. All right, let's talk about dinner. Avocado and Marmite on toast and a protein shake. So I'm gonna show you what I ate on another evening this week instead, as it's much more exciting. The best vegan pizza I've ever had in my life. Okay, so Miles actually had avocado toast with Marmite and a protein shake for dinner, but he instead shows us a super yummy that he had another night, which looks awesome by the way. But the truth is there's nothing wrong with the boring meal he actually had. I like that we have some healthy fats from the avocado, carbs from the toast, and protein in the protein shake. I mean, even if it's not fancy or Instagrammable or YouTubeable in this case, I like that he still has a good balance of macros. Sometimes I just really like the realness of, hey, I was alone tonight and didn't feel like an elaborate, fancy meal, so this is what hit the spot. I mean, there are lots of nights where I eat like Greek yogurt and oatmeal, and I'm okay with that. Let's take a look at day two. Which isn't a vegan place, but they do have a new vegan menu, for what they were to be honest, but it was bomb. And when I say bomb, I mean that the heat from the spices almost blew my head off. Chickpea flour dumplings, this pancake potato dosa thing, which was super tasty, and also these little shots of spiced carrot soup. I had these pancake wraps, which were filled with vegan cheese, quinoa, lots of different veggies, and to be honest, I have no idea what else was in there. Oh. I am totally craving Indian right now. That looks like an amazing feast. I love that unlike a lot of YouTubers, Miles is not afraid of eating out and it doesn't seem to impact his diet earlier on the day like we sometimes see. By that I mean he doesn't restrict calories or portions to save calories for a big binge later. Considering some of the YouTubers that I've reviewed recently, I really appreciate that. What this tells me is that even though Miles may say he isn't really able to eat intuitively, which I'll talk about soon, I actually think he may have greater skills than he thinks and can respond to his hunger cues, enjoy food, be social, and not punish himself for it later. I am not seeing this extreme restrict binge situation that I see with so many other wellness YouTubers. Let's take a look at day three or quinoa and black bean burgers, which come with the most amazing caramelized onions. We also got some salad because you can never eat dinner without greens, in my opinion. And also this really amazing creamy coleslaw. So we went to the best vegan ice cream place in London called Eureka. Anyways, after being one of those annoying people who asks to try every flavor, I got a scoop of coffee and a scoop of coconut. So lots of delicious looking stuff going on here. I love, first of all, that he said, you know, you can't eat dinner without greens. Honey, you are basically an honorary dietitian in my books. Second, I am also that annoying person who samples every single ice cream. I mean, how can you possibly commit if you do not try? Uh, and finally, I love that he said to nourish your body, but also your soul. Miles, 
I get you. Now let's talk about my overall thoughts on his dinners. So a lot of you might be thinking, well, what he's eating for dinner isn't very healthy. How could Abby possibly approve? This is actually a breath of fresh air to me in this perfect obsessive vegan YouTube diet world. Folks, when you're eating this many beautiful colorful vegetables, slow burning carbohydrates, plant-based proteins and healthy fats for breakfast, lunch and your snacks, you're gonna hit your nutrient needs. So there is no need to sweat it out if you dine out for that, you know, every other meal once in a while, if that is what brings you joy. I actually like that Miles gives us a realistic look at what a balanced, normal, relaxed, vegan diet could look like. And since Miles discusses his needs to keep close tabs on his macros and calories sometimes, I think it's great to see him kind of loosen the reins a bit to dine out and enjoy that time with friends. So is this diet balanced? I would absolutely say yes. I'm actually seeing a really nice macronutrient distribution between Miles' days, as well as a solid sense of flexibility in his lifestyle, which is really refreshing in the YouTube vegan community. If he opts for a carb heavy breakfast, his lunch tends to be higher in protein and fat with a solid variety of fresh fruits and vegetables enjoyed throughout. He's also not explicitly demonizing any ingredients and isn't afraid to enjoy a social meal out with friends without it fueling some kind of restrict binge cycle. Miles, you are a cool guy. Now, is there anything missing in his diet? I don't really think so. I mean, he is taking his B12, D and omega threes and his meals are impossibly healthy looking. So folks, if you want some vegan inspiration, you know where to look. Now, I also wanna to touch on some awesome things that I think we can definitely take away from Miles' channel. First of all, he's not afraid of oil. So there have been a lot of YouTubers that I've reviewed lately that are explicitly avoiding oils. And I've done a whole video on this, looking at the research for and against that argument. So definitely check that out right here. But I am happy to see Miles have a smart, yet not obsessive approach to added oils. Sometimes, like for the dressing he made with tahini, he doesn't use oil because the fat from the tahini is enough to build body and carry the rest of the ingredients. And sometimes, like when he's roasting vegetables and tofu, he uses enough to coat the vegetables and ingredients so that they crisp up and get nice and brown. This, in my books, is a smart use of oil. I too don't like a really oily salad dressing, that's a personal thing, but I do pan sear or roast with oil because otherwise food just never gets that rich caramelized flavor and color that we're looking for when we roast foods. So I would say that this is a really smart use of oil in my books and definitely something that others could look towards. Number two, he gives some great tips on how to build a satisfying meal physically and emotionally. In several of his videos, Miles discusses that he has a seemingly insatiable appetite, but what he's learned from trial and error is that there are few things that make his food more satisfying. He specifically aims to make sure that there's good protein, good carbs, and good fat, basically echoing what I said about the hunger crushing combination. And you can see that apparent in his food choices, which is great. But he also talks about the meal components that are not nutritionally based. So the color, the crunch, the variety, the flavor. What he's talking about is emotional satisfaction in that something could be straight up super satiating physically, but if it's not appealing emotionally, you'll still go searching for something else, something more. So kudos for actually breaking down both elements that go into building our true satisfaction. Number three, he doesn't judge people based on their dietary choices. It's kind of really disappointing to be very honest. Um, the amount of comments I've gotten recently about like, you know, one of my very close friends who you're gonna see in this video, like, oh my God, are you still friends with her? You know, she's not vegan anymore. How can you hang out with someone like that? And it's like, I can't believe there are people in this world that love people just for what they put in their mouth. Like, I'm telling you right now, none of my friends, none of my friends are my friends because we're just vegan. It's really sad that there are still people in this world who kind of have that division of who they hang out with based on what they send down the chute. It makes me really sad. And the fact that I've got so many comments um, about this one person saying like, oh my God, like, are you still friends with her? Are you still gonna hang out with her because she's not vegan? And it's like, number one, I'm offended that you 
would even assume or question that I'm that shallow. And number two, like, get some help. Yes. But can we get more vegans like you and fewer vegans like Freely in this world, please? But honestly, we're all just trying our best here and figuring out what is good to eat is such a personal choice. So I love that Miles doesn't discriminate against friends of his who maybe don't share his same food philosophies. Honestly, I don't care what your dietary beliefs are. These are the kind of friends I want in my life. Number four, his recipes just look amazing. I mean, this is really a big enough reason to watch Miles. I think his recipes are delicious looking and simple. And I would happily eat anything he makes and would love to go out for a meal with him because the guy totally knows how to order. Now, are there any problematic claims being made by Miles? I mean, I didn't hear anything that I would flag as perpetuating misinformation. I actually think Miles is super thoughtful about the information he shares and the language that he uses. In fact, there was one point where he kind of nonchalantly says the word junk food, and then in his edit, he clarifies what he meant by that so that he wouldn't offend anyone. I mean, I get you, Miles. It is really hard to be an influencer these days, and I am not going to judge you for saying junk food. I'm just happy that you're so purposeful about the information that you would put out there into the world. So thank you for that. Now, I do think it's important to address some of Miles' thoughts on intuitive eating to clear a few things up. So Miles recently made a video called, um, being on a diet is okay, intuitive eating is dangerous for some of us, including me. I'm just going to dive in and respond to a few of the points he makes. Because intuitive eating, even though I agree with a lot of the principles behind it, it doesn't work for everyone. So, Miles, we're actually not that different, you know. I have constantly clarified based on my own learning that intuitive may not be for everyone. In fact, I mentioned this at the beginning of every intuitive eating video that I produce. I also tell people that we can kind of choose what aspects of intuitive eating works for us, but I do believe that at least some of the principles apply to all of us. Namely, things like respecting our body, gentle nutrition, discovering the satisfaction factor, coping with your emotions with kindness, etc. But there are a lot of flaws in the intuitive eating model if followed by the book, specifically that it doesn't account for all pre-existing healthcare concerns and also socioeconomic status. Let's see what else he has to say. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between someone that is severely orthorexic, very obsessed with food, and will only eat certain things at certain times, versus someone that is conscious and mindful, and knows what is best for their body, therefore plans their meals accordingly, and wisely, and intelligently, and... I don't have a fourth word, but you know what I mean. 100%. And this is actually baked into the intuitive eating model, but I get how Miles is unsure of this as intuitive eating has kind of been positioned by a lot of critics as just eat whatever you want, whenever you want, donuts all day, air day. There is actually still a consideration for nutrition worked into this way of eating, not only through one of the principles in itself, which I'll speak more about in a moment, but because planning your meals and being thoughtful about your meals is a really great way to keep your hunger and fullness managed in a way that feels good. So for example, if I don't plan my lunch out, it's not the end of the world, but it may mean I let myself getting more hungry than I comfortably would otherwise. And then I have to make more frantic decisions about what to eat once it gets to that uncomfortable state. This is what intuitive eating is really trying to prevent, but in the most compassionate, non-judgmental way possible. So if I eat more one day because I didn't plan, oh well, you know, I'll bank that information for next time and I'll move along. Let's see what else he has to say. Within intuitive eating, it's kind of all against, you know, no calorie counting. There's no time and place for calorie counting. You know, the emphasis should not be on weight loss. And in my opinion, this is bollocks. If you are severely overweight, yes, the emphasis should be on weight loss for your health. Drastic action needs to be taken when your health is in a, drast a drastic position, you know? Okay, so here's where I stand on this. There may be intuitive eating practitioners who say this is the protocol for everyone, regardless of your current health status or goals. 
But personally, I do believe that it requires an individualized approach. Not everyone can follow all of the principles in order and feel comfortable giving themselves that freedom to eat ad libitum when they don't really have proper hunger or fullness cues, or when their health is currently in a concerning place. As for his comment about eating yourself to 300 pounds, what I will say is that like hunger cues for miles, Sometimes fullness sensations are also complicated and cloudy for some people. One thing I would be curious about is whether or not the food choices of someone like who Miles is referencing are both satiating physically and satisfying psychologically. When these things are constantly at odds, overeating is way more likely to occur. So for example, maybe we're using food as a coping mechanism and relying a lot on refined carbohydrates that are really tasty, but not fueling our body with the protein, healthy fats, or fiber that it needs to feel satiated and energized. So personally, I believe that some people may need to work with a dietitian who can help build out some structure to get those hunger and fullness cues back, help one understand their emotional eating and mouth eating cues, educate on the types of food that are both satisfying and satiating, and ultimately encourage the client to trust their body in the baby steps that they're really comfortable with. There's also an interesting kind of disclaimer here he's got. Okay, so I think like a lot of people who criticize intuitive eating, I'm not sure Miles has actually read the book in its entirety and notice that there's a whole principle on nutrition. Of course, intuitive eating may not be as much of a numbers game as other diets, but it doesn't make it a free for all eating fest. In fact, in my experience, a lot of the people who feel really relaxed about intuitive eating do have a solid knowledge of nutrition. The difference, however, between somebody who feels comfortable with intuitive eating, who has this nutrition knowledge, and someone who ends up in orthorexic territory is that they don't punish themselves for this knowledge. Now, I want to flag that the reason why nutrition is left until some of the foundational principles are ironed out is that when you're stuck in restriction mode, any choices based on nutrition are still coming from a place of restriction that is just not sustainable. So once you work through the process of letting go of the diet voice in your head, you can make decisions about what to eat that not only take into account what looks good or tastes good, but what feels good to your body and honors your health and nutritional needs. Being on a diet, being on a healthy diet is a good thing. And also the word, again, the word diet can be taken in so many different ways because when we hear the word diet, we think of restriction, lack of calories, severe weight loss, but it actually when I think of the word diet, it means just a way of eating that either supports or damages your health. It's essentially a lifestyle. I think the most important point I want to make in this video is that for certain people like me, it is absolutely impossible to intuitive eat long term. Maybe in the future I can do it, right? But as someone that has stretched my stomach to the absolute max, by just binging on like I can't even explain how much food like back in the day as someone that went through periods of starvation as someone that went through periods of massively over exercising I'm talking like three four hours a day in the gym you know as someone that has formerly been addicted to drugs I know this video is going to get demonetized for me saying that word but I'm just being real here as someone that has been on so many different medications for my physical health problem for those of you that don't know um I have I have, I had a disease of high adrenaline. It's very rare. It's called pheochromocytoma. Okay, so I think it's worth mentioning that while I do believe everyone can incorporate at least some of the principles of intuitive eating, like I mentioned, not everyone's eating and food history or even their current medication or health status allows them to just jump in unassisted. Some people need to be guided a bit with some support by a dietitian with structured meals and snacks about four or five a day until you can get that hunger and fullness sensitivity back. And if you're currently on medication that blunts those cues, then you may actually need to continually and mindfully eat those consistent meals to make sure your body is getting enough nutrition. This is something I definitely think a dietitian can help people with, but it looks to me like Miles is doing exactly just that on his own. He knows his body's needs and has a good base knowledge on nutrition 
and he's nourishing himself accordingly even if his medical history prevents him from feeling those regular hunger cues very well. So some people will just not easily ever feel comfortable eating intuitively for a variety of reasons, not just medication. You know, it's not a perfect foolproof model, but that does not mean that Miles can't incorporate at least some of these principles. And like I said, I actually think he's doing a great job of that. I know for a fact that when my anxiety is very, very high, it makes me feel physically sick. It makes me feel like I can't even look at food. And on those days, I have to be conscious and wise. And if it gets to 1 p.m., 2 p.m., I'm still not hungry. I have to be like, okay, I know my body is on some kind of roller coaster right now, but I need to eat. Because if I don't, I'm going to spiral down further. And again, Essentially, that goes against intuitive eating because my body is telling me not to eat, yet I know I need to. After years and years of abuse, my body deserves this. And if I were to intuitive eat, I'd be lost. Okay, so this is another common concern amongst a lot of people when it comes to intuitive eating. But intuitive eating is not just about listening and responding to hunger cues. It's also about self-care and gentle nutrition. And it sounds like Miles actually has a really good sense that if he just lets his hunger guide him, he won't eat enough and he knows that. So using that knowledge, he's choosing to nourish his body because he knows it will make him feel emotionally and physically better if he does. Like I said earlier, intuitive eating is ultimately a bit of a privileged concept and it doesn't account very well for food insecurity and illness, which is what Miles seems to be describing here. So as I mentioned in my updated view post on intuitive eating and health at every size, I don't believe you're doing anything wrong if you can't follow each of the principles of intuitive eating to a T. This process can really meet you where you are and we can learn how to integrate the principles and components that work for each of us. And on that note, folks, that is all from me today. A big thank you again to Ritual for sponsoring this video. So you can check out the link in the description, ritual.com slash sharp10, and use my promo code sharp10 to get 10% off your first three months on Ritual. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with your thoughts on any YouTubers that you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.